Ciao friends, and welcome to the whiteboard. In this episode, we will see what happens when you execute a DAX query. We will focus on the formula engine, and in another video, we will discuss about the storage engine. But in this introduction, we also have to introduce the storage engine to understand the interaction between the two engines, the formula engine, which is the topic of today, and the storage engine that we will see in more detail in a following video. Remember, the whiteboard is a, a series dedicated to see these uh, uh, advanced DAX concepts from a different perspective, from a different angle, looking at a more graphical way to describe these uh, hidden concepts. This, uh, con this content does not replace the existing articles, videos, and books that we have. You will find in the description of the video uh, links to additional articles that uh, look at this topic in more technical detail, and we also cover that in uh, Mastering DAX, in Mastering Tabular, and in our de Definitive Guide to DAX book. But now it's time to go to the whiteboard. So let's start from this example where we have a DAX query that is not using any data coming from an external data source. Let's take a look at the result of this query that is actually getting two names in a table called names. These table names has only one call called a name. And for each name in this names table, we generate a list of numbers, one for each letter of the name, that is displayed in an additional column called letter. We can see the result of this query here. So we see that we have the two names, Alberto and Marco. And for each name, we have a sequence of numbers the index, the position of the letter in the name and the corresponding letter, Alberto and Marco. Now, this query is not actually executing any request to the storage engine because all the data required are included in the uh, DAX query. So we can see this here. So if this is our query, the query that we have seen in the, in the example in uh, DAX Studio, we can see that this request, so let's try to highlight this. So names is generating a table using this table constructor. So this table is actually generated within the formula engine. And so we can see that this is the table Marco. This is the table names, which is generated out of the original table constructor. And then the generate function that we have in combinations gets this names table and generate another table that has more rows and another column. So we can imagine that this generates another table with this time two columns and the result. And finally, we have this result which adds an additional column letter to the result we have seen so far. So we have here our letter that correspond to the uh, let the, the value of the letter for each index that we generated with the generate series before. And as we have seen here, the result has actually uh, exactly the, 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 the content we request. Now, if we take a look at the query plan, the query plan is actually showing how the calculation has been performed. This could be complex to understand, but if we take a look at this content, we will see all the function names that we included in our request, but more important, we see in the server timings that there are no requests to the storage engine. You see that the entire time of the query has been spent in the formula engine, and we have zero milliseconds and zero queries executed into the storage engine. SE means the storage engine. So when we have requests made to the storage engine, we see a number of requests here, and the language of the request correspond to the language supported by the storage engine. So what happens if we have a different query? Like, for example, this query that requests a list of the unique colors in the product table, but displays these names using upper. And in this case, my table product has been imported using Vertipack. So in this case, what happens is that my request here still, so this is the request we have, the evaluate select columns. We can imagine that we have, oh, sorry. We have this request going to the formula engine like before, but this time the request we have here 
requires, uh, um, requires to retrieve the data from the storage engine. Let's see this in detail. This request, this thing product color, cannot be solved by the formal engine because it's actually a request that needs to access data in the storage. So this request is made from the formal engine to the storage engine that returns a list of the unique colors. But this part of the query, the upper, is executed here in the formal engine in order to produce the final result. Why this? Because the storage engine that we're going to use, Vertipack, does not know how to support the upper function, and so it's not able to generate this. How can we check this in the code? Once again, if we look at the server timings, we see that this request, so let's execute this request once again. This request actually retrieves the um, uh, column color from the product table. And you see that in the storage engine request, there is no request for upper. So the column is retrieved as is. We, see, we still see zero milliseconds, but we can see that one query has been executed. How can we know that the, um, the formal engine is requesting, is, uh, is executing the upper function? We see that in the logical query plan, the request for upper exists, and this uh, logical query plan uh, contains all the functions that we have indexed. But when we see the same uh, name, the same function name in the physical query plan, then the physical query plan corresponds to operations executed by the formula engine. And so in this case, the formula engine executes the upper function. What could be a, a different result well, if we use a direct query, and in this case, in direct query, we create a temporary calculated column using upper, using this syntax, because a direct query um, over SQL can actually implement upper in the SQL, uh, in the T-SQL uh, dialect of the ANSI SQL uh, language, we can see that the result contains the colors in uppercase, the query plan now still includes upper in the logical query plan, but as you see, upper is no longer present in the physical query plan, and the storage engine request made to SQL Server actually includes the upper function straight into the SQL query. So if we go back to the whiteboard, what is happening this time is we still have this separation between the formal engine and the storage engine, so the storage engine this time uh, is able to execute the upper function. So we see that this uh, execution upper that generates this upper color uh, column is entirely executed into the storage engine. So in this case, the formal engine is acts, acts like a pass-through that generates and requires uh, from the storage engine to retrieve the data already transformed with the upper function. So upper in this case is executed here and the result is returned to the request to the client that requested the DAX query. Whereas in this case, in the previous case, upper was executed in the formal engine. So the formal engine has a full knowledge of the DAX language, can execute any a calculation that you can express in the DAX language and can actually generate new tables like we have seen in the first example using generate series and the table constructor syntax. But when it comes to retrieve the data from the actual storage, import a table in, in a VertiPack or any kind of type of direct query, then the request must be forwarded to the storage engine. At that point, the storage engine could receive more complex instructions depending on the capabilities that you have in a particular storage engine. So in this episode, we have seen how the formula engine works uh, from a very high level point of view. The formula engine is able to execute any DAX calculation, but is not able to retrieve the data from uh, the actual storage where the data is stored. A direct query could have also more advanced capabilities and can perform part of the job that could be otherwise executed by the formula engine 
Uh, whereas when we use imported data in, uh, in uh, the Vertibug storage engine, the engine is, is extremely fast, but is not able to perform many of the more advanced calculations we have in DAX. But we will see these details in the next episode. In the meantime, enjoy DAX!